My presentation is on using a modeling first approach on Napal in a traditional differential equations class, but certainly you can use any computer algebra system. Um, I just give you a tiny bit of background about Manhattan College. It was it's located in the Bronx and it was founded in 1853, and um, the schools are listed. The full time enrollment is about 3,600. Uh, the the differential equations course that's taught at Manhattan College is a three credit 200 level course. It's required of every student in the School of Engineering, and it's an elective in mathematics. There is a system, a syllabus with topics that have to be covered, uh, but one of the things that in preparation for common cumulative final, but we're starting to change that. So that's why the asterisks are there. I've just been given permission to just tweak that a little bit. I'll be able to report on that after the semester is over. But for right now, all the traditional methods of solving differential equations do have to be covered and the systems of first order differential equations are in the curriculum but they don't have linear algebra so what i've done is one third of the in-class time is allotted to modeling first activities and i've basically taken from the modeling scenarios on the semiode website every semester i say i'm going to make one of mine and then i just fall back on the great semiode modeling scenarios that are already there they're simply fabulous I supplement the lectures with videos on the material covered. So everything in the video was covered in class, but I give more examples and more explanations on the videos. Uh, so instead of doing one kind of maybe first order linear difference, instead of doing like three in class, I might do one in class and give a video that has three more. Um, we make extensive use of the computer algebra system, Maple, and it's definitely the case that modeling first approach works best when uh, students actually solve the problems. Any computer algebra system uh, will work, but, uh, but, we, but we use Maple. And we definitely ask questions on the test that covered ideas from the labs. So for example, the, the semester just began and the com I used the common cold spread uh, by Corbin Harwood from George Fox, and it was adapted um, for a presentation that was done in, um, faculty development in Simeo. And this semester was different because I had everybody's remote and the students didn't have beans. And so I just went on screen and I did this, the simulation where 30 residents were represented by beans um, are come back to a college campus where initially three residents were infected. And there's a, um, the model of a uh, dormitory floor. And we figure out a way that the students will get infected by the um, common cold. And we just continue the simulation until no beans remain. I adapted it a little bit and I didn't have the right size beans. So our students got infected pretty quickly, but I just thought I would present to you the kind of thing that typically happens and that is, um, that the students have different rounds and if you look at susceptible count because there are 30 beans in the in the pot to begin with and three are already infected there's 27 who are susceptible and then we just keep performing the uh, experiment until it ends up that in the seventh round nobody was left to be to get the disease because they had all gotten it already and then we had the infected count and the change in the infected and so on and there's a really good um, background to exactly how you can simulate the, um, or talk about approximating the derivative. It's a fabulous um, scenario. The students actually plot the data, the infected count, and the number of susceptible. Infected derivative, they struggle with. Certainly the number of susceptible, de as the number of susceptible decreases, the number of infected increases. Uh, this has been made even more um, interesting this semester because of COVID. And it has been said by the students that they'd rather talk about something and try to understand it than just worry about it. So nobody seemed to have trouble with replacing the ideas of, of um, a common cold with the COVID, back, uh, the COVID um, virus. Um, people for the first time, one of my students said for the first time, I understand that I really wanted that inflection point to come in the number of infected that yes, that there's an increase, but at some point 
the rate at which it's increasing is decreasing and that kind of thing. But they do struggle with the idea of infected derivative. Uh, again, we, you know, we talk about what's the most appropriate model and it doesn't take much uh, convincing that not only, not only does y have to be in the problem, but 30 minus y has to be in the problem. Um, and, and then we ask questions like, what does dy dx represent and what value of dy dx? What does dy dx depend on in a given time and that kind of thing? Um, there's also the boarding school problem that disease spread in simiode where a student carrying the flu virus refers to an isolated campus of a thousand students and then you give some information about how many students are infected after four days and that kind of thing. But here's where what I like to do in my classes is I really like to have maple, uh, to have the students use maple so that they're solving the they're actually solving these problems before they've done a single differential equation, and we're just giving them code um, that they're coming up with the idea of the differential equation that the change in x with respect to time is proportional not only to x but also the number of people who are infected, but also to a thousand minus x the number of people who are not infected, and then we sh we just give them the code to solve the initial value problem and and analyze it. Um, and we tell them that you don't have to know a lot of maple. All you have to do is say what it is that you'd like to do, and we'll give you the code to do it. And the bottom line is that as soon as they know what they want to do, they tend to know how to do it. So that's exciting. Um, and then a test question that would cause, and then they would graph it, but a test question that would correspond to this it's from calculus, you know that an inflection point is a place where the function changes concavity. Describing where it's what happens at the inflection point in the above graph in, turn, in terms of the change of the number of infected with respect to time. Just speak about it, talk about it, give some information about it. This one I absolutely love. This is from Simeo, the ant tunneling problem. How long does it take an ant to build a tunnel? And that's it. That's the question. We definitely spend some time simplifying and identifying terms and that kind of thing. But the bottom line for us is that students honestly and truthfully struggle with the idea of what the definition of the derivative is. They, you know, so we make some assumptions and it's not that they, it's not that they um, struggle with the definition of the derivatives, that they don't see the derivative anywhere. And so if we say that x is the length of the tunnel in feet and t of x is the time it takes the end to build that tunnel, and we draw a picture like that, um, the suggestion in Simeon is to say, draw a better picture, draw something like this. I've stood in front of a class where we reviewed the definition of the derivative first before we do anything, and it's just kind of on the board. And then this seems like a brand new and different problem. And honestly, they struggle with the idea that maybe um, T of X plus H might be a good thing to talk about. And so, but it, it takes a while, but finally we talk about what about T of X plus H and what does T of X plus H depend on? And, and people say, yeah, it depends on H, but it also depends on X and that kind of thing. And so if T of X is the time and hours it takes the end to build the tunnel, then the time it takes to build the small section of tunnel is T of X plus H minus T of X. That's um, fabulous to have people start thinking of that start thinking about that numerator and what they've memorized as the numerator of the derivative appears in um, in these kinds of problems that we're going to consider. And then we talk about how t of x plus h minus t of x is proportional to both x and h. And because of that, we end up creating a derivative by dividing everything by h and taking the limit as h goes to zero. Um, another one that the students really enjoy, they struggle with a little bit, well, they actually struggle with it a lot, but the, uh, the traditional snowplow problem about starting snowing in the morning and continuing throughout the day, it plows two hours the first hour and so on and so on. They typically decide that they need narrowing of scope, some simplification, identification, and talking it out, we end up possibly with this is what my students said. They realized after a while they probably didn't need H of T, but this is what they did. And 
when we used maple to solve the problem, the biggest thing is just, you know, what does it mean to say the snow is falling at a constant rate? What's the rate at which the snow plow travels is inversely proportional to the height of the snow? Virtually everybody agreed that they kind of didn't need the, that extra K, um, but that's what they did. And it turned out fine, or that extra C, I should say. It turned out fine. Um, and people just solved, you know, perfectly. And But maple was the key. Using a computer algorithm system was the key. Um, in a problem like this one, where you start with this problem, you just start with it. Now they might have done, they probably, they will have done one tank problem to begin with. And this is a two tank problem, the likes of which they have not seen. And we just start with this problem and say we have these two tanks and and it's fascinating if you ever try this and just do it where you don't tell them anything but here are two tanks. It's fascinating to see them try to cram every bit of information into one differential equation. And that takes a while before they say, wait a minute, can we have two? But the 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 importance of this, if you start with this problem, is by starting with the problem, they don't know that it's in the section of um, systems of differential equations. And so it gives them the opportunity to think and say, wait a minute, maybe there's more to life than one differential equation. So I particularly like just doing this before we even mention the words systems of differential equations. Um, and it was great. That, that, that's what I just went into detail. They saw it for the first time as a modeling first. And they analyzed all their questions and they had, you know, subsequent questions from several different perspectives. And it really is just the, the point that you have tank A and you have tank B. But once they thought about these two tanks, it just became the one tank problem doubled. And it was fine, maybe a little bit messier with having a B of T and an A of T in the problem with the initial conditions. But again, the beauty of this is that having maple for them and giving in this code has to be handed to them. But once that code is handed to them, um, they do fine. And so it's imperative that if you're using technology in the lab, that mathematics takes the center stage. And it really is the case that most students will say, I don't know what to type. And what they really mean is, I don't know what to do. So it takes a while, typically two weeks when it's not online. It's taking a tiny bit longer online. It takes about two weeks, but finally students realize that asking for code is not going to help them because I'll give them code for anything they want, but they have to tell me what they want. And certainly the use of technology um, enhances the modeling first approach. Students aren't limited to exploring modeling problems that can be done by hand. And it, the appropriate technological tool does allow them to hypothesize an experiment. And honestly, a computer algebra system allows students to analyze their solutions, graph their solutions, see if the graph makes sense or if it makes no sense at all. Uh, for there's so many really good scenarios, and these are some of the scenarios that uh, that I used in over the years. I still swear I'm going to make some. I hope so. I really want to. I feel like I owe it, but um, that hasn't happened yet. And just in terms of parting words, just get started. Start small. Check the sites. Um, often scenarios are at, are added all the time, and the students really do like it. The use of technology encourages students to hypothesize, experiment, analyze, and so forth. But the one thing that I would say without a doubt is to, to um, minimize frustration. You really have to know the computer algebra system well. Um, and it still can um, be difficult for you to find mistakes and that kind of thing. But encourage students to talk to one another, help each other find each other's mistakes, and uh, good luck. It's... It's, I think it's definitely worth it.